A very good morning to everyone who has uh, joined us today. I extend a warm welcome to all the participants for taking time out of your schedule and attending this session. I extend a warm welcome to our speaker, uh, the Council General of Japan, Bengaluru, uh, Sugita Sama. Uh, thank you for accepting our request and uh, uh, for, ex uh, for addressing our students today. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. And uh, today's session is going to be about the emerging opportunities in Japan for Indian students uh, in terms of jobs and higher studies in Japan. So I hope you all take back a lot of information from the speaker, all her experiences and her valuable inputs to all of us. And uh, please note that uh, after the session, after the talk, we will have a small Q&A session so you can listen to the speaker and whatever doubts or questions or queries you have, you can drop them in the chat box in the Zoom. Uh, we will read out your questions and the speaker will address them. And uh, please note that the uh, recording of the session is strictly prohibited. And uh, we request you all to maintain the decorum of the session. Kindly keep yourselves on mute. And uh, only in case you have something very important, you can put it up in the chat box or on the WhatsApp groups. We will uh, get back to you and possible. And uh, yes, I hope you all have a good time and take back lots of information and valuable input. Thank you. Uh, here on, I would request Sensei to take over. Thank you. Thank you, Manasa San, for the nice introduction. First of all, I would like to give my heartiest thanks to Consul General Sugita Sama for having taken her valuable time out of her very busy schedule and that too on a weekend. Today being the, uh, what do you call, a Saturday weekend, being a day of uh, holiday, but she has take, given her valuable time to address not only the students of Japanese, but also all the enthusiasts who are interested in Japan and Japanese language. So I will, the uh, course of speech will be in such a way that first give me a short five minutes to introduce our Sakura Nihongo Resource Center, following which allow me to introduce the eminent speaker of today, Consul General Sugida Sama. And after that, the speech of the speaker will begin. First, a small presentation about our Sakura Nihongo Resource Center. Sakura Nihongo Resource Center was established in the year 2000. This year being our 21st year, we are marching towards the uh, various services of Japanese language, including Japanese education of all the Japanese language preparatory exam, JLPT levels, the conversation courses, the corporate courses, individual courses, which comes under the education scenario. We also do the translation of documents. We do the um, interpretation during sessions and also bilingual placement. These are the various Japanese services and we are wholesome, comprehensively dedicated only to Japanese services. Now, we can continue. Manasasan, please continue. So Sakura Nihongo, as I just introduced, we do JLPT level courses for all the levels, including five, four, three, two, and one, we give the native teachers expertise for your self-preparation. The, the very important course of uh, Sakura being the culture orientation workshop, workshops, wherein it is in high demand in all the companies to give uh, insight about the uh, cultural value system of Japan, which is very unique and very sensitive to understand while working with Japanese clients. Yes, we can continue. The corporate, we, uh, Sakura Nihongo Resource Center specializes in doing the corporate session for full-time intensive, intensive training, wherein it is like a regular school or a college training program, starting from morning nine o'clock to evening six o'clock with the full-time Japanese training, wherein lots of kufu, what you call the technicalities will be brought in, not only the language training, but also the value system the sensitivity or the etiquette that Japan carries forward, more importantly than only the language intensity will be brought in. We also do many individual classes over the weekdays and also the weekend, wherein the
is also indicated for you. The culture orientation workshop is an Yes, you can continue, Manasasa. So in total, Sakura focuses not only on the uh, JLPT oriented programs and also the learning scenario. We give a lot of importance to the cultural value system. So the, the key domains in translation includes engineering, pharma, software, being Bangalore being an automobile and a software um, rich area. We have our expertise in doing such documents translation and interpretation services. We do bilingual placement of uh, engineers, non-engineers, and all other professionals who have a uh, Japanese skill. Of late, we have diversified ourselves into higher studies in Japan also, wherein our students who have cleared JLPT N5 or N4 are taken by Japanese language schools in Japan after undergoing a interview. So, so much so to say, we give overall a collective comprehensive. Yes, we can continue. So, and uh, the facilities to students include a very rich library wherein we have all sorts of uh, magazines and also textbooks ranging from N5 level to N and one level also, we have excellent uh, Jitan, what you call the encyclopedia and the dictionaries, everything available for students. It is also open for everyone, not only our Sakura students, it is open to all candidates. Then we introduce students to a very interesting intercultural program called the Japan Haba, wherein our students are given extra training to participate in the cultural activity. So language training is an immersive, continuous activity, not only mm -hmm. confined to the classroom. So this is what Sakura offers in wholesome. Yes, I can continue, please. So this is a partial list of our clientele, wherein we work ranging from software giant study, um, whatever looping coming under the pharma area, sun pharma, everything. So this is our client, partial client list also. It will be interesting to note that uh, Mercedes-Benz, which is a German organization, also does a lot of Japanese activities. Yes, we can continue, please. So we would like to consolidate all our services in these websites, wherein you can log in to see our uh, umpteen number of uh, services that Sakura offers. And especially not only during this uh, pandemic time, we um, have our expertise or we highly focus on the online programs, which are called as the OJAS, Online Japanese Services of um, Sakura School, wherein we have sort of developed over that time, all the resources in the online platform. We have changed completely the focus from the offline classes to the online sessions. With this, I would like to conclude a very small presentation about uh, Sakura, which includes training, interpretation, translation, and bilingual services. Thanks for listening to us. Now, give me the opportunity to introduce the eminent speaker of today, I mean, the Council General of Japan. Sugita Sama assumed office as the Council General of Bengaluru in June, 2020. Sugita Sama's areas of interest lie in Indo-Japanese cultural exchange and the growing presence of diverse Japanese firms in Bangalore. Sugita Sama is also Bangalore's first lady Consul General of Japan. With this interesting introduction about the Consul General, I would like to request the interesting and value-adding speech by the eminent Michi speaker of today, Consul General of Japan. And Sugita Sama. From this, I hand it over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Srividya Sensei. Good morning. Namaskara. It is a great pleasure Good and morning. honor. Yes. Do you hear me? Yes, we hear okay. you. Okay. Okay. It is a great pleasure to be able to talk about the Japanese social customs and manners at Michi program, the Japanese business etiquette program of Sakura Nihongo Resource Center today. Srividya Sensei has been contributing to promoting the Japanese language education, as well as the Japan-India friendship through her many capacities, 
She's been voluntarily de dedicating her busy schedule to organizing the famous Japan Hubba, held annually. Under her stewardship, this year's Japan Hubba, which was held digitally, reached over 12K people all over India and other parts of the world. So I'd like to take this occasion to personally express my deep gratitude to Sri Vidya Sensei for her, her powerful role for bridging Japan and India in Bengaluru. Sri Vidya Sensei, Dom Arigato gozaimasu. I understand that most of the audience today are studying the Japanese language at Sakura Nihongo Resource Center or are interested in studying the Japanese language in the future. Naturally, many of you may be familiar with basic knowledge of Japanese business etiquette and customs through the study of the language. But I'll be touching a few points that are a little beyond the Japanese business customs and etiquette. I'd like to discuss the Japanese way of thinking and the Japanese culture that lie behind those business etiquettes and customs. I hope today's program will help some of you further deepen your understanding of Japanese people and culture. Let me apologize in advance for those who took part in the program hosted by the Lotus and Chrysanthemum Trust yesterday. What I'll talk about today is a little similar to what I discussed yesterday as the themes are coincidentally very much alike. Now, let me sh share with you some slides I have prepared. So please have a slide. And can you please go to the second page? Okay. The Japanese people have learned to show humility and demonstrate politeness since childhood. The physical gesture of humility and politeness is demonstrated in the bowing gesture. There are three ways of bowing, light, medium light, and deep, depending on the occasion. It is said that the bowing culture came from China along with Buddhism. So it's originated in India, of course. This gesture indicates that one has no intention to attack the other by showing the back of one's neck. I have heard that shaking hands in Western culture also indicates that the hands are free of weapons. In my, my, in my time living in Singapore, right before I came to Bengaluru, I was able to identify Japanese people simply by watching their behavior at restaurants or metro stations. The Japanese bow when they meet and bow when they bid farewell. Sometimes they keep bowing to each other. Although Buddhism is associated with the bowing custom, Shintoism has also influenced and encouraged Japanese humility. In Shintoism, there are 8 million gods in the universe. People feel the presence of these gods in mountains and in the ocean. A long time ago, village people used to talk about how some villagers <laughs> fell sick or got misfortune because they neglected or disrespected the gods. A top sumo wrestler, Hakuho, who is originally from Mongolia and has been naturalized to Japanese, once said in an interview after he won the championship that he was able to attain victory because he was favored by God of small wrestling. This statement shows the essence of Japanese humility. A few weeks ago, a Japanese golf player, Mr. Hideki Matsuyama, won the Masters Golf Tournament in USA and recorded the first victory in the history of the tournament as Japanese and Asian player. This news of victory was welcomed in Japan with great joy. At the same time, a story about his caddy, Mr. Shota Hayafuji, went viral on 
social media and shared by hundreds of thousands of people in the world. Mr. Hayafuji took off his cap and bowed to the green field right after Mr. Matsuyama's victory. It was a common gesture for Japanese, but the world saw in the inherent politeness of the Japanese people in his gesture. Japanese people bow in various scenarios. A person who has just retired may bow to the company. I hope I can hear, I, 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 I am audible. High school baseball players line up and bow at the end of the game to the baseball field, paying respect or showing gratitude to one's surroundings, whether it is a work or sport environment, is cultivated naturally in the mind of the Japanese people. You can continue to the next slide. Japanese society has become more and more influenced by global business practices and customs. So Japanese business people today clearly express their opinions or comments so that there's no room for misunderstanding. However, it used to be that the Japanese business people did not say no clearly, even in important business negotiations. They tended to leave their answers vague only because they did not want to give a negative comment and undermine the atmosphere, which left their foreign counterparts at a loss. Today, we still sometimes have vague expressions in social scenarios. Some do not clearly express themselves and give vague answers to avoid discord in order not to hurt the other person's feelings. For example, at a social gathering, when some people decide to stay longer and ask others to join them, even if you may be feeling otherwise, you often choose not to hurt their feelings or create discord in the atmosphere and refrain from clearly expressing your true feeling. Can go to the next. In Japan, people may expect you to read the air or a cookie or yomu in workplaces and at social occasions. In other words, they expect you to read the atmosphere and act accordingly. If one cannot read the air, you'll be, you'll be labeled as KY, which is an informal expression for a person who cannot read the air. K represents kuki, Y represents yomenai. Other expressions such as kigakiku or kigatsuku also uses ki the same character as in kuki. Ki literally means air or mind. Even though air or minds of people are not visible, one is credited if one is good at guessing this and can accommodate or cater to others' requests or feelings without verbal communication. One of the traditional arts of Japan, bunraku, this is a photo of bunraku performance on the screen is representative of this feature of reading the air in a brilliant manner. Three puppeteers move a half life-size puppet with the narratives and music on the stage. However, the three puppeteers do not talk to each other. The main puppeteer who is showing his face leads that movement. He gives subtle movements of his shoulders or feet and the other two puppeteers, whose faces are covered, follow his movement almost simultaneously. I believe this nonverbal communication skills were developed because Japan is a homoge homogeneous society as compared with India, Singapore, or the United States. They speak only one language and physically look more or less the same and easily fall into an expectation that others will be able to understand their intentions. Okay, next please. The concept of respecting seniors is an important value in Japanese society, just like in most other countries. It is said that the idea originated in Confucian philosophy. The Confucian ideology was born in China 2000 500 years ago and introduced to Japan in the 6th century. 
Japan has been historically influenced in many aspects by China and the Korean Peninsula. My extended family gather in January to celebrate the New Year's Day in restaurants or at my parents' house. We are four generations. My parents, their children and spouses, their grandchildren and spouses, and their great-grandchildren. The seating arrangement and, uh, is usually determined spontaneously and casually. But the only rule we stick to is seating my parents at an honorary position at the end of the table. Can go to next, please. The Japanese do not overly show their emotions at a time of sorrow or joy in front of others. In 2011, the Great East Japan earthquake and tsunami claimed lives of over 18,000 people. It was the most difficult time in the recent history of Japan. Of course, there were lots of tears shed over the loss of loved ones. In the dates just after the disaster, the world carried articles about those people who are lining up in a reserved manner in front of shops to get food and water. This resilient attitude surprised many people in the world. We can continue. The concept of saving face is valued in Japanese society, just like in most other countries. This idea also came from Confucius philosophy. It was introduced to Japan and later set the moral in the feudal period of Japan. During the feudal period, feudal lords had regional hegemony and retained samurai warriors to protect the land and property. They fought against each other to conquer others' land and try to expand their power. It was to protect their honor and the honor of their laws that the samurai warriors deeply internalized the value of respect. They even chose to die if this was the only way to avoid dishonoring their names. The concept of saving face is still vividly followed in Japanese society today as well. For instance, employees believe they are shouldering the reputation of the company and they are committed to honoring the name of the company. As the names of the company used to be written on a piece of cloth which was hung at the entrance, protecting the cloth or noren means to honor the name and reputation of the company. Protect the noren or noren wo mamoru, still used as a metaphorical expression of saving the face of a business, family lineage, or tradition that has been passed through generations. Next, please. Japan started to cultivate rice approximately 2,000 years ago. Rice was introduced from India, which had started cultivating it about 6,000 years ago. With 75% of land dominated by mountains, Japanese people had to grow rice in limited field, however small the available land may be. Therefore, the farmers worked hard to grow rice in harmony with other farmers because Growing rice is a communal activity. The Japanese school education has traditionally placed an emphasis on disciplining children with the values needed for teamwork or group activities, especially in elementary schools, which covers grade one to grade six. Children are taught to obey school rules and not to cause disorder at school. As a means to teach school discipline, assembly meetings are held once a week where all school children gather at the assembly halls or the school grounds. Schools also conduct annual events such as sports festivals, art and music programs when all the children participate in those activities. Japanese children practice to sing in chorus in music classes or school or special occasions. An inter-school competition for chorus is annually held, held, hosted by a public broadcasting company and the level of the talent is remarkable. The most important aspect in school education is to let children practice hard 
in harmony with other children to attain specific goals. In schools, children are obliged to do group activities and other tasks, including cleaning their classrooms, corridors, and toilets after school. Children are also responsible for distributing lunch meals in classrooms. These group activities are highly valued at public schools as important elements for nurturing a strong sense of responsibility and about group mentality at an early age. Okay, let's go to the next slide. The Japanese society or Japanese business practice values consensus building in the decision-making process. Even the president of a company cannot make decisions alone. Decision-making takes place as a consensus building process by circulating a set of documents called Ringisho to get approvals from all the relevant departments. This is an approach of down to top decision making process. During this process, there could be negotiations or renegotiations to resolve conflicting interests among the different departments. The documents are carefully examined by all the sections and finally sent to the office of CEO or president. This process usually takes, take, takes a longer time than when the CEO can make decisions alone. But once the decision has been made, it is a solid decision that will not easily sway. Can go to next. Japanese hospitality or omotenashi can be pronouncedly observed in Japan Airlines or all Nippon Airlines. You are given a wet towel before being served drinks. This is a custom you find in most restaurants in Japan. The hospitality in the flight includes the elegant manners with which meals are served. Even after you are out of the aircraft, the airline attendants are working hard to sort out the luggage at the turntable. The purpose of doing this task is to help passengers find and pick their luggage as smoothly and efficiently as possible. You can go to next. In Japan, there is a saying to pluck out the eye of a live horse or ikiuma no meonoku, which means to be shrewd and sharp. This is a metaphoric expression and means that one has to be quick to make the most out of each opportunity. The Japanese business practice highly values time and punctuality. I think time is very important when it comes to pursuing business. A late response from your business partner may result in a loss to your company. A late delivery of goods to customers may tarnish the reputation of a company. Honoring time and punctuality is linked with the concept of honoring or saving face. Next, please. Japanese business people like to hang out after five for a social get-together. This kind of social occasion does not take place as it used to be this last March. But if the situation returns to a normalcy, nomikai or drinking parties will most likely pick up. The word nomination was invented as people can talk in more relaxed manner or uh, manner at drinking parties, and the drinking party is considered as a useful tool to promote good communication among the office workers. Typically, workplaces hold get-togethers to welcome newcomers, bid farewell to those who are leaving the job or getting transferred to other sections, and also at the end of the year. Cherry blossom viewing is another popular occasion to get together for eating and drinking. But the younger generations are gradually leaning toward enjoying their privacy after office hours. So this type of work culture is not as popular as before. Okay, thank you for the slides. This ends the slide presentation. But my speech continue to wrap up. 
Japan and India have deeply shared the philosophy of Buddhism and cultivating rice from a long time ago and are sharing the common values of democracy, rule of law, and free trade today. I believe that our two countries can learn much more from each other with the potential to become good partners in tackling global issues such as coronavirus pandemic, prevention of natural disasters, and environmental conservation, among others, through our cooperation and combined wisdom. I also believe that new technologies such as IT, BT, robot science, and space development will inevitably accelerate and expand our partnership. To study the languages is one of the keys to understand the culture and way of life of other countries and regions. With this belief, I also started to learn Kannada last year. I hope through the studying of the language, I will also be able to deepen the understanding of Kannadigas and Bengalurians. Thank you. Danya Badagalu. Thank you very much for this enlightening talk. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So this was very interesting to understand. The listeners would be highly thrilled, I am very sure. See, uh, talking about only the job opportunities, is, anyway, there are quite a few questions. I think Manasa San has got, she is going to bring it up. But really to understand the mindset of the people of the other country, because Japan has excelled over all other nations of the world through this unique and very sensitive work culture. A very beautiful insight about the thought process of Japanese has really brought in a lot of lights in the minds of the listener. So with this wonderful talk by the eminent speaker, the Consul General Sugita Samma, I would like to, uh, Manasasan, if you could take and you can give it to the, uh, answer some of the questions asked by our participants. There are not many, just a few. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um. Are there a few questions about uh, some of the opportunities or how youngsters would be considered, Indian youngsters would be considered in Japan? I yes. heard there are such questions. Mm. Uh, so there is one question from uh, Ambika San. She says, uh, I wish to know about academic opportunities, particularly regarding teaching English in Japan. I am currently pursuing uh, my PhD in English literature. Sugita-sama? Thank you. Okay, am I audible now? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, the teaching English opportunities. As I said, uh, well, I didn't touch specifically, but uh, English education is much emphasized in Japanese education. Uh, we usually start to learn English from elementary school, but focus on English education more so in junior high school as well as in high school. And there are several programs to teach English for foreigners. One typical program is called JET program, Japan English Teaching Program. By this program, uh, applicants go to Japan and teach English at schools and usually the school board, uh, usually the education board of each prefecture or township are responsible for retaining 
the employment of the JET program participants. But I am sorry to confess that there are some limitations to the countries uh, to participate in the JET program. So let me find out whether India has been uh, participating in this JET program. I understand that Singapore is participating and the United States is participating among the countries I have served before. India, I have to find out whether there is an opportunity open for the Indian nationals to go to Japan under this JET program. And in addition to this JET program, there are opportunities uh, for private uh, English teaching institutions to find English native speakers in Japan. Uh, because uh, to study English is highly valued in companies as well, as globalizations drive Japan to conduct their business meetings much more so in English. So uh, what you will have to do is to find uh, private institutions where they are looking for native speakers of English in Japan. That's a lot of value added to this question of Ambika san. Thank you very much, Consul General Sama. Uh, Manisa san, do you have yes, any uh, other questions? Yes, we have question? quite a yes. few questions. Uh, so, next question is from uh, Pranav san. Uh, he asks Does the language pair uh, German Japanese have good scope in Japan in terms of teaching German or in companies as a translator? What kind of certification or course? is required to be done if one wants to teach English in Japan. Uh, may I just uh, confirm, uh, the question is whether you need a certificate to teach English in Japan. Is that the main yes, question? Yes, that okay. is the question. Okay, all right. So, uh, the JET program does not require any English teaching certificate. If you are a native speaker of English, you have to go through some selection process, but you do not have to have certificate to teach English. And I have to check with more information when it comes to private institutions, because private institutions may require some teaching certificate and it depends on the demands or requirements of each company. But if I may say so, in general, those companies do not ask for teaching certificate unless they are very strictly regulating the teacher's standard. Sorry, uh, I can just give you this much. <laughs> yeah, that is uh, great enough to understand. Basically, how does Japan look into Indian youngsters because that is the uh, whatever the roaring question in the minds of all the youngsters of uh, India. So, what is the scope for Indian youngsters in Japan in totality? Uh, is it uh, with technical skill and language, which is a highly expected one, or uh, only the language skill with any other degree is okay? Because many youngsters of India are looking as Japan a destination for job and higher studies. It will be very thankful if you can comment on this area. What is Japan's view of Indian youngsters? Uh, more and more Japanese companies are looking at the talented Indian human resources, if I may say so. The digital agency will be launched this year uh, towards the autumn uh, by the uh, Suga administration to, to promote digitalization in every sphere of Japanese society, including the administrative tasks. So there will be a high demand in digitalization in Japan. Japan is a highly aging society, as you know, and we are in dire shortage for IT talents. So more and more Indian talents who are expertise, who have expertise in the IT technology are welcome in Japan. And uh, I think uh, there are many movements uh, dr driven by each individual company in Japan to hire more Indian 
youngsters in this field. At the same time, I would like to introduce TITP or Technical Internship Training Program by which uh, Indian youngsters have been sent to Japan in such fields as uh, senior uh, elderly care in Japan. Uh, as I said, uh, there are a uh, shortage of hands for elderly care in Japan. And those who have studied the Japanese language and can communicate to the elderly people in Japan are most welcome to help the elderly people uh, to uh, go through their life uh, and improve the welfare of those people uh, in Japanese uh, nursing homes and other facilities. Uh, there are many more opportunities, more and more open in Japan for Indian youngsters. So we are looking forward to uh, opening the boundary for the employment opportunities for Indian youngsters in Japan. So that's a very encouraging answer. That's what I think many of the participants of today's uh, Michi seminar is looking forward to. How is India looked upon by the Japanese community? Yes, as uh, you heard directly from the Consul General Sugita Sama, there are many number of opportunities that are awaiting you. Yes, Manasasan, do we have a few more? Hardly one more or two more. I think with this we'll conclude. Manasasan, do we have any other questions related to Japanese and work in Japan? Uh, yes, we have a few questions uh, spe uh, with uh, uh, specifically to uh, engineering and a few branches. But I think I will just pick up some generic questions uh, so that uh, I think everybody would be able to relate to it. Subhita Sama, is there a particular portal or website where people can generally look into all these job opportunities that are available in Japan? Or is Sri it Vidya only... Sensei, yes. uh, I, I don't think there is one general portal where the Indian youngsters can find jobs because job opportunities are there can be really wide in wide spectrum it can be out uh, it can be the demand driven by private companies or it can be uh, from the uh, local autonomies and they there's no just one window where you can find unemployment but uh, if you are specifically interested in some fields for example uh, elderly care or teaching English or IT skills, you can go and find out what kind of opportunities are available. So there are lots of uh, works you may have to do before you find the target industries or target right. companies. But uh, the Consulate General of Japan can always be available for guiding you if you need help. And as for the JET program, as I mentioned, uh, I'm not sure whether the Indian nationals are included in uh, applying for this program. I would like to let you know your organization so that you will be able to post it uh, at a later date for the audience today. Yes. Thank you very much. That's a lot of uh, good information saying one may have to do a lot of research because there are many opportunities in various fields that are open. Just keep your your eyes and ears open to find out that, right? Yeah, sure. Yes, uh, is there a generic question, Manasasan, with which we'll uh, conclude? Mm. Yes, uh, we can pick one uh, question from uh, Ramit San. He okay. says, uh, I would like to know um, what kind of part-time jobs are available for foreigners and what is the restriction on working hours? Um, okay. It is a, a little difficult to, question to answer. Uh, yes, there are many part-time jobs where I see foreigners are working in Japan. For example, in convenience stores, you see uh, those non-Japanese youngsters who are working as uh, part-time job, as well as some restaurants. Uh, I see non uh, 
Japanese young people working as part-timers. So the job opportunities are available for part-time jobs once you have legal uh, status to be able to live in Japan or work in Japan or to study in Japan. Uh, usually you can get opportunities for part-time jobs. The first thing is you have to earn a visa to stay in Japan for other purposes. Uh, there are no visa for a temporary job visa. Very true. So that Mem, your voice is breaking. Uh, hello, madam. The voice is breaking. Not at all. Not at all. Ma'am, I have one question. Could I ask Adisha Shiv? Could I ask one question, ma'am? Uh, Shivanandan san, I request you to Hi. please um, uh, put it up on the WhatsApp group. Uh, we will uh, oh. consider all your questions. We will get it clarified with the call. Ma'am, uh, we... please write down your uh, WhatsApp number or WhatsApp group number, ma'am, in uh, chat box. I will put up the details on the chat. Uh, you can pick it up from there. Okay, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Madam, one small question, madam. It takes two seconds. Can I put it? Uh, request all of you to put up your questions on the chat box. We will... Madam, this I request kindly request this question. Please accept only. Request all of you to put the questions. We will definitely get back to you. Uh, we will prepare a QA. And along with the answers, we will uh, share the documents with all of you. You can Madam, please, Madam, two seconds it will take. I don't think we got the question right. So I think it is time for us to conclude. So Manasa san, I think you can give your vote of thanks and we can conclude the session. Uh, Sensei, I think your audio was not uh, uh, properly audible. Uh, if you could please repeat whatever you had to say in the end. I don't think it is uh, clear. We can take the question later to get the answer. I think we can conclude it. Yes. Okay. Uh, so um, we see that all of you have had a lot of questions. We understand, uh, but uh, since uh, everything, all the, I think we have around 50 to 60 plus questions on the chat and that would not be possible uh, to answer right now. So we have saved all your questions. We will prepare a document with the answers and we will put it up on the WhatsApp group. Please stay on the group so that once we share the document, you will get your answers to the questions. I hope all of you understand. And um, yes, I would like to thank our speaker, uh, Sigita Sama, for taking time out of her schedule and being very patient and sharing so much of information with us. And I hope whatever she shared was helpful for all of you. And uh, yes, I thank all of you also for being patient with us and sitting through and listen to whatever she had to share. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Arigato Gozaimas. Arigato Gozaimas, Tadevansan. So it was uh, a very good, uh, what do you call, uh, pioneering talk by the eminent speaker, Sugita Sama. 
today. Thank you very much, Consul General, for your valuable time to enrich our audience. Once again, Makotoni, Ariato Zemashta, Kokorokara, Kansha Itakima. Thank you very much. Domo Ariato Zemas. Domo Ariato Zemashta. Thank you very much, Sujasan uh, and uh, Shivijasan. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks Thank for you, your time. Thank you, Karan Thank you, Srividya Sensei. I'll see you soon. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Arigato Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Arigato Bye. 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 Thank you, Sugita Sama. Sensei, please no, uh, send your WhatsApp number uh, in, no, in chat box. Uh, I'm there in the group what is created, no? So you can post a question. I'll take it and 